Hi Lauren, welcome to the Quint. So pleased to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. What got you into dancing first? It was it something that you were always doing? I have two brothers, so I was doing sports and playing with Legos and kind of boy stuff because I was trying to like fit in with my brothers and their friends. And my mom was like, "Oh my god, we have to get you in something girly." So they she put me in dance class and I was it? hated What? it. I was seven years old. In the US where I come from, Scottsdale, Arizona, people start dancing when they're three. And I thought I was so far behind and I was really stiff. Mm -hmm. So I cried every single dance class. I begged my mom to let me quit. And she was like, no, like I can't be that mother that just says, oh, you want to quit? It's tough, it's difficult. Yeah, okay, fine, quit. And I moved to Los Angeles, so there was like that struggle period of just continuing to do auditions and not see anything from it. And then I started, I, I auditioned for So You Think You Can Dance, and I made it, and then I went really far in the competition. And then from there, it's like the entire industry and the entire country knew me. How did acting come about for you? I started auditioning for things, and right when I got my Bollywood offer, was like I had just reach the point of getting like the auditions for the leading role. Audition for Step Up 4. It was between six of us girls for the lead and it was the night that I found out a good friend of mine who was also from So You Think You Can Dance, she booked the lead and I didn't and I was devastated. Mm -hmm. And I was like I'm so happy for her and I tweeted her, I facebooked her, I texted her like you're a rock star go kick ass right. from the most pure place. And I kid you not, the second I sent those messages I get an email alert and it was like 4:35 in the morning and I check my email UTV motion pictures. I did the research. I was like, "Oh, this is a real thing. This is a real one of the biggest production companies in the country." It was that profound of a moment for me to say, "I'm going to put a pause on this and I'm going to go start over <laughs> in a foreign country and see what happens." Right. It was ABCD1 that happened first. I had 30 days left with my visa. Okay. When I came out here for the release of the film, and I started networking, trying to meet people, make connections, nothing was happening. And it got down to like the last like three or maybe four days where I was like I'm I'm going to go home. I got a call from Lizelle D'Souza, Ramo's wife, and said she said um uh there's a show called Chalak, Dancing with the Stars, and they want you as a celebrity contestant. I was like, "Oh my god, like it happened like three days before and I probably would have never come back." And then tell me why did you decide to come to India because I I can speak for a lot of Indians that we want to go to the US and it's always like US is the aim, but what made you come here? What was it about India that attracted you as a country? It was just a feeling. Honestly, it was that night crying in my room and then having this huge opportunity i was like this is it and i want to tell you you were my personal favorite on jhalak the khaja you were one of the finalists on the show right i got second place yeah right so did you feel like you should have been the winner just tell me yes i did because i had delivered so many like perfect score performances and it's not just that it's like my body of work on that season on that show i felt so fulfilled as an artist like where when i was on so you think you can dance i didn't feel like i got the best choreography you know i just kind of never felt like oh this is like really really great drashti did an incredible job salman did an incredible job so There was absolutely no hardships. I would have loved to have won the title, but it it doesn't matter about winning. It honestly doesn't. Whether it's so you think you can dance or whether it's um Jhalak Dekh Laja, were there parts of it that you didn't possibly like yeah. enjoy? Yeah. 100%. Um God, I'm such an honest person. <laughs> <laughs> it was very difficult being an 18-year-old girl just moved to Los Angeles away from my parents for the first time and the pressure it created a lot of anxiety in me like so much anxiety that I would walk on stage about to do my solo and the music was going to start and I felt so choked with anxiety that I'm like and it's live in the US it's live right. live and I'm like that pressure is so much so you think you can dance too you learn that in 6 hours Cuz here we would spend hours and hours and you spend an entire week doing it. The issues I had here cuz 
I even think India does a way better job with like the production value of these shows and like like fun aspects of it. But just tell me, did you ever feel like dancers don't get enough credit for what they do? Yeah. 100%. Don't get enough credit, don't get enough money. I don't think I have ever felt that because I I have a really nice business mindset too that's like, okay, I don't want to just be a background dancer. Coming to India was another way. Doing Jhalak as the celebrity, because they, they offered me the celebrity um, uh, side of it and stuff because I'd come in a movie here. And then a little bit later, like before I signed the contract, they actually came to me and were begging me. They're like, can you actually be the choreographer? Because no one knows you here. And what if we lose our best dancer in the first week? Because no one votes for you because no one knows you. And I'm like, I'm not doing it. You being a foreigner in India, I think in the beginning things will be a lot more accepting. But what is it like over the years? Do things change? Is the industry as accepting? When it comes to roles, I definitely don't get the offers for the roles that I know I should be doing. Plus the, the language has been a huge battle of mine. I'm learning more and more now. <laughs> thank you guys, thank you, thank you. You said that so you think you can dance did a little bit of damage already. Like what state of mind were you in when you came to India? Like, I don't think it was any one thing. Like I would never say that it was so you think you can dance because of that. Like my mental health started taking a dive. It was more so that like I grew up with so much aspiration and so many goals and it's like when I get here I'll be happy. Okay, I got that job. Now when I get there I'll be happy. Oh, now when I get here, when I was in India a couple years ago, I checked off every single box of everything I'd ever wanted to do and I still wasn't happy. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. And I took a big step back. It wasn't like I wasn't getting work. I made sure that I didn't get work so I could have a place to learn and to grow. What was that specific time when you um, when you started to realize that it was taking a toll on you when you were in India? Um, it's a really good question. I don't know, it got to a point where like, I didn't feel like I would, uh, I don't know. It's something I kind of want to say, but I don't know if it's the right time to say it. That like I had done a couple of things in my career that I felt like were a big step back and that really hurt me. I knew I needed acting school because eventually I want to go and be in Hollywood movies. And for that, I need to really study. And I had all this Indian, like I'd become very Indian where I'm like, okay, Hollywood's very like, you know, raw. And so I needed to go to acting school and therapy. So that was it. I just went for a year to go to acting school. And now I'm loud and I'm proud of saying, yeah, I was depressed. Yeah, I had a lot of anxiety. Tell me something, okay? We we'll talk about social media. I did read somewhere that you said that even though you were dealing with so much internally, you still showed that you were happy and everything was all right on your Instagram. Why exactly? Well, it was just what I had done my entire life. Like what I was just saying, like I'd be having a bad day or maybe I had a fight. Maybe I was like really upset, but you would walk in front of that camera and it's like, boom. And that's also being professional. It's just, we all do that. We have these feelings on the inside, but we want to project a different image to the world. So you put on a completely different face. You don't see people in tears on your social media because it's a highlight reel. We as society have made it a highlight reel. So we as society need to change that. Right. So what is on the cards now in the future? I just came out with this song with Hardy Sandhu. And now I know like I've gone into some meetings lately for like big TV shows. And, and there's been a, like there's one time this director came in and he kind of had his back towards me. And I was like, what is this energy? Right. And so now it's on an energetic level. Now. If the energy is not right, I don't care how much money or how you say this is gonna move my career along. And that's that's a change that I'm, I've in, implemented into my life. It was lovely chatting with you, Lauren. I don't know how many people can be as raw as you are, be as inhibited as you are, and do the things that you're doing now. Thank you so much Thank for doing you. this. Now we're really talking. Yeah. Thank and you. And dancing, always. <laughs> Thank you Thank so much. You.